Welcome to a gorgeous fall day on Cigar Creed. I'm JJ, your host. Today's review is going to be on the Partagas Serie D number four. We're going to do a bit of brand history as well, uh, seeing as we haven't done Pargus yet. So, <clears throat> with that, we got great veins, fairly small, good, tight, visible seam, um, beautiful triple cap. Gorgeous bunching on that. I'll see if you can figure this. See that? Looks good. Good shot on the band. Anyway, so that being said, uh, gorgeous Cuban cigar. My favorite. Just a beautiful, sweet, sweet wood aroma on that. Mm. Man. I'm not going to wait any longer. Mm. Beautiful. Let's cut it, toast it, and get to know it. So I hope everybody had a good Halloween. Hope everybody enjoyed that little Halloween video I posted. If not, go back, check it out. It's just a couple minutes. Anyway, uh, it was fun, you know, just wanted to throw something together. Mm. No resistance, beautiful draw. Hmm. Bit of the zing on the tongue. Cedar, salt. Mm. Very good. Very good. So, the Serie D number four is a Robusto. It's four and seven eighths. 50 <clears throat> ring gauge the uh, part of this brand itself is a full strength uh, brand and the, uh, the fillers are from the Vuelta Bajo region of Cuba and the brand was started by a man named Jaime Partigas. And to the contrary to some belief, it's not Jaume, who was his father, um, or Juan, as some have called him, Juan. Um, but no, it was, uh, Jaume was his father, he was a tailor. And, uh, Jaime Partigas was his son who started it. And they came to Cuba in 1831 uh, from Spain. <clears throat> and Jaime worked for a gentleman uh, by the name of Juan uh, Canil. And and he owned a Vega... Uh, and basically was one of the biggest tobacco exporters in Spain. So right off the light, I got earth, wood. There's a touch of spice, not a whole lot. Um, I'd say it's because of the, you know, everything just kind of hitting you at once. So it's really not a, a, a extremely spicy cigar or peppery. Um, it has a touch of pepper for the most part uh, throughout the cigar, but it, uh, it really uh, plays a small role. It's there throughout, but it plays a small role in these. So 
smoked many of them. I had to break into the new box because I ran out of my other ones. So <clears throat> the box that I originally filmed, this is from that. <clears throat> Nothing through the nose. I feel absolutely nothing. So gentle. It's funny because the smoke, there's lots of smoke off the draw, light off the foot. Um, but for the amount of smoke produced off the draw, it's very, very thin uh, in terms of some of the other ones, of like a, a lot of like Nicaraguans in that too, even some Cubans too. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the light, lighter wrapper um, and the lighter notes that it does have. So, it's actually really light and wispy. Anyway, so we're giving, getting back to Jaime Partagas. So, this gentleman, Camille, that he worked for, <clears throat> um, he had uh, taught. Jaime Partagas, very various aspects of the company or the company and the business on how to uh, basically how everything worked um, in terms of cigar manufacturing, growing, all that stuff. So um, <clears throat> later on, uh, he ended up working for an Austrian man, and uh, his name was Fr uh, Francisco uh, Cabanas, and he worked with him for quite some time, proving himself as a torcedor as well. And producing cigars while working for him. So, uh, later on, uh, the brand, well, the brand that he was working with was called Cabanos as well, named after the gentleman, uh, Francisco. Now, Jaime also went into business with a gentleman after he left Francisco. And this other gentleman was a, uh, another protege, so to speak, of Juan Cornell, the same guy who trained uh, Jaime. So they went into business with... Uh, they, they ended up opening a store in 1831. Um, and then a warehouse in 1840. And then five years later, they had the factory in 1845, which branded the name Partagas. And <clears throat> he also acquired uh, a couple farms as well. And the Partagas a Copeña was... was was born basically and the farms that he owned were in the Vuelta Bajo region um, he was also credited as uh, basically producing the first or not producing but um, he introduced the the lector the person that reads the uh, most of the time it works out where they uh, in the morning they read the news and go through the paper and usually in the afternoon it's uh, a, a novel that they would read um, popular to the torcedores and the boncheros and uh, the workers basically in the factory just to keep them entertained <clears throat> so in 1848 he was actually sued by the son-in-law of uh, Francisco Cabanes, basically for using his name. Um, so what had happened was is that Jaime Partigas ended up using, uh, associating himself with the name Cabanas, which he already was, uh, because they knew him through when he was working for them. But <clears throat> he added that name to his orders and factory um, basically to break into the British market. 
but because his name was already associated with that and uh, with with Cabanas, really, I don't see a need uh, why he would do that. But you know, he supplied for dignitaries and uh, royalty, etc. Um, <clears throat> but the son-in-law won, so. He was using La Flor de Cabanas and basically dropped that. And then he ended up going with uh, La Flor de Paragesesia. <clears throat> so in June of 18, 1868, uh, Jaime was shot. And um, he was on, well, uh, while he was on his travels. I believe he was going from uh, one factory to a farm or something like that. But he was shot and eventually died. Three men were charged for his murder. One was uh, charged for the conspiracy of it. The other was charged for supplying the weapon. And the third one was charged for pulling the trigger basically and the gentleman who ended up pulling the trigger ended up being one of his employees from one of his farms the purpose as to which he was shot and murdered um, was a uh, revenge basically plain and simple and <clears throat> Getting some nice floral notes now. Mm. Great bouquet. It's nice. It's light. It's got a bit of spice to it on the bouquet. Got some bread going on. Again, through the nose, smooth as silk. <clears throat> Bit of sweet notes in there too. Touch of coffee, not much. Bit of raisin in, in, in there, actually. There's that nougat as well. Nice oils on the on the on the lips from the uh, from the wrapper. So <clears throat> Jaime was shot beca uh, because of revenge, and what had happened was he. It was a, a, a combination of things. So he, he, he was shot, or the motive was um, the extortion he was doing on the farmers. And he was extorting them by renting them equipment and loaning them money for additional land to expand their crops and, and their farms at a ridiculous amount of interest and in, in, uh, monies to be paid back. So when that couldn't happen, he would then basically make them sign over the farm, literally. And uh, that's how he acquired a lot of his crops and his farms. As well as he was... Uh, mingling and having apparently relations with uh, with some some of the slaves that worked on the farms. So <laughs> just goes to show you, you know, as as rich as you are, as well protected as you are, and as 
you know, famous as you are, you, you never know. But anyway, <clears throat> you just don't want to rub the wrong people, that's all. He, uh, the, uh, you know what? I'm going to stop here, give a review for the end of the first. Great ash. Nice Cuban flaky ash. That's your ideal right there. So to recap on the first, um, the first third, we had some nougat in there. We had our wood. We had some cedar. A little bit of coffee. <clears throat> it was a good start for sure. You can feel a little bit of the strength right now. Um, Particus is a strong cigar, um, but it's good. You know what I mean. It's the the the, the flavor comes and the palate's washed. Uh, it doesn't linger, so the, the, it has a short uh, short span across uh, for the notes. So, now that we're <laughs> pushing into the second here, um, we'll carry on with a bit of the more history. So, after the death of Jaime, his son Jose <clears throat> uh, took over and then shortly sold it off. Uh, now, the gentleman that he sold it to was a uh, banker, uh, Jose uh, Bonses, Bances who owned Henry Clay, also acquired La Cepcion from Jose Henner Ibetet, who is the owner of uh, Hoya de Monterey. And after, he had a partner by the name of Ramon Cifuentes. So Cifuentes eventually bought him out, took on full rights of the company, and uh, when Cifuentes passed, uh, Ramon Cifuentes passed, his three sons took over the business. <clears throat> now, they had uh, a short life, well I wouldn't say a short life of running the company, but they ran it basically until the revolution. Once the revolution happened and the nationalization of all the brands took place, they fled to the U.S. And that's pretty much where the Cuban Partagas brand stops. Um, and then picks up in the U.S. So that would be the, well, I wouldn't say the brand, the history on that Cuban brand stops, but uh, up until in the independent owners, where it was nationalized, that's where it ended. So, just got a gram. Little, little cottony. <clears throat> a lot of wood in there, cedar. So nice through the nose. Really is pleasant. Okay, so we're back pretty much at the end of the second. Um, great notes in there. And, you know, I, one of the things that I, I was really thinking about is the fact that because the notes wash off the palate and are, are light on the palate um, with a, a very pleasant... Um, earthy and wood, light wood, light earth and light wood notes 
after. Um, I think it's why it's one of the most enjoyable cigars is because of that. And it's surprising because it is a, a full strength cigar that the after aftertaste and everything is, is very light on the palate. So, which does make it quite enjoyable. But I had Graham again, sweet notes came through, it's a bit of a touch of chocolate, not much. Um, very floral again. Uh, and they were pretty consistent. The spice did pick up, strength did pick up because of where I'm at as well. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm not feeling heady or anything like that. I'm feeling very relaxed. <clears throat> and that's what you want, you know. It, uh, it, it's easy to see why it has the popular, popularity that it does. So, um, just delightful. That's all I have to say. So the, uh, the brand itself was a 1930s release and, uh, stretched to the sixties was discontinued and then re-released again in 1975 to the present day. Uh, since then it had also donned uh, 33 special releases. Uh, majority of them were pretty much from 99 to present day. And um, there was, there was an issue with the bands itself at one point due to manufacture. Um, nobody else. And I think it kind of had a few people worried that the scars may have been fake, but it wasn't. So the manufacturer defect was that the label, um, where it said Serie D number four actually had three periods or dots. Um, where now it has only one, which is after the, the number. Okay, right before number four, or right before the four. So it did have three dots, and because of that defect is now or manufacturer error now has one. Or vice versa. So I'm just gonna remove the band here. Now it's been said that there are two types of two types of smokers of cigar smokers, the conscious and the unconscious. And the unconscious one is just the one that, you know, lights up a cigar in the car, in the workplace, or whatever while working and not caring really. And basically, the other one is the one that uses it as a sole means of relaxation. To get the full benefit out of it. You know, just to pass time, forget about anything else in the world, and just sit and relax. So, those are the two types of smokers. Me, I prefer the third option. Anytime, anywhere I possibly can when I can, no matter what I'm doing. Relax, whether I'm relaxing yard work or something like that. Take it as it comes. If you can, you're fortunate. If not, you're unfortunate, so. So, let me know what kind of smoker you are. You know, leave a comment. Do you, how do you prefer to have your cigar? Out with friends, hearse, whatever. Um, relaxing mode? I say they're all good in my book. Whew. 
So I'll leave you here. I'm going to come back at the end of the third and my final thoughts. See you soon. Okay. So we're back. Final third, final thoughts. Great construction. Beautiful burn. No touch-up required. Look at that. All the way around. Good sharp burn to it. Beautiful. She's right down there. So strength picked up again. Uh, spice picked up. The, uh, the end notes were pretty much wood and earth. But like I said, they're so light on the palate. And they wash away. And, it, you know, you're not left with that, ugh, you know, bad aftertaste. It's actually quite, um, uh, I don't want to say pleasing, but it's, you know, it's not bothered, not bothersome. So we're pretty much nubbin status here. Rightfully so with this guy. Mmm. That was actually a good gram. Nice gram note in that. So, <clears throat> hopefully you enjoyed the review. Again, good strong cigar. Very easy to see why it has the popularity it does. You know, why it's such a global cigar and, and um, liked by a lot of aficionados and connoisseurs alike. So right down to the average guy, you know. Um, so if you have a chance, highly recommend it. Could not recommend it anymore. It, it's definitely one of my favorites. I, it is a go-to all the time. Um, really can't say enough about it. Just a great cigar. And if you can get a box of them, you won't be disappointed. You really won't. I have yet to be disappointed on any box that I bought of the uh, Siri D4. So anyway, Cigar Creed, I'm JJ, and uh, we'll see you soon on the next review. Thanks.